Okay. So, uh, so that means, uh, names and nomenclatures they are all divided into three lectures. First lecture was uh, regarding uh, important uh, nucleus of heterocyclic compounds and then second lecture was systematic nomenclatures. Today also we continue the systematic nomenclatures partly, but uh, with a focus on fuse systems and then uh, we will see some important names in heterocyclic chemistry. Uh, normally, uh, those which are found in medicines, natural products, polymers, etcetera, etcetera, agriculture, all these things. And also, we will try to identify the important nuclei present in the structures, that is all. So, that takes care of these uh, sort of names and vocabulary and nomenclatures, everything. Okay. And uh, so, uh, let us uh, begin with an example with a few systems. Suppose you come across a few systems, how do you name them? What is the first job you have to do? First job is to do a uh, draw a coordinate. Draw it, uh, so, <coughs> draw a coordinate and then place as many as possible rings along the x, x axis. Uh, let us take a simple molecule and then uh, probably you would be able to, uh, let us say we are talking about a molecule, molecule uh, of this kind where you have 6 membered ring uh, fused linearly and then there is a ring also. Uh, so, say tetracyclic ring systems as you can see. So, they are all aromatic, aromatic, aromatic. So, that means, you have to place the molecule in such a fashion that the maximum number of ring lie along the y axis sorry x axis and also you have to keep it in mind maximum number of the atom must be on the right top corner quadrant. And the, I think you understand the meaning this is the right top quadrant. Okay. So, maximum number of atom must be there. Uh, then, then you have to identify then I, I have to identify the basic nucleus the, uh, the nucleus uh, which should be named as the surname. In this case what you can see the linearly what you have is an anthracycline anthrac anthracene. So, you write anthracene anthracene then what is left out that is the top, right top ring this one and this one should be uh, coming as a prefix. So, in, in this case uh, it should have been a benzo right. So, benzo anthracene, but uh, what we will write we will write benz anthracene reason being there is an alphabet uh, that vowel here after the bracket. Okay. If you do not have a bra uh, alphabet like a here is a vowel there. Okay. So, then you write benzo, but in this case we write benz and uh, within bracket third bracket we will have it a. How do I know A? Okay, the, it could have been B, C, etcetera, all these things. The A is referred to the A bond of anthracene. That means, this is the base, basic nucleus, this is the basic nucleus or nucleus of higher priority, and that must be referred in naming the bond A. That means, the A bond is referred to the anthracene. Okay. And in, in, in this case, ben, case of the benzene, is equal, all the carbons, all the bonds are equivalent. So, there is no numbering required. Now, let us take a heterocyclic molecule. So, we have a molecule, let us say in my note, there is a molecule of this kind. So, uh, here again, just a phenanthrene, and then uh, there, is, there is a nitrogen up here and nitrogen up here. So, uh, I mean, so, so far, uh, okay. Then uh, again, you just draw a coordinate axis and then uh, try to place as many as atoms possible uh, in the uh, right top uh, quadrant and then what else and then th that is all that means what is the basic nucleus now here this is a quinoline and you have then then uh, and the, the prefix should be pyridine that pyridine or quinoline that should have been the name, but again, I didn't, but this is not named as the pyridino quinoline. The reason being, that is why in the very first class, we have given you the important nuclei, those are accepted in IUPAC nomenclature. For example, quinoline cannot be named as benzopyridine, it should be named as quinoline. Similarly, a phenanthrene system with two nitrogen should be named as not really, it is actually phenanthrolin. So, phenanthrene, but mind it then the, why did I write then this one? This is also very useful for numbering system. 
whenever that means how to number actually uh, now again to uh, do the numbering what you start from the right top corner right top corner and that to from a bond which is not fused to a ring uh, sorry from an atom which is not fused to a uh, ring for example in this case right top corner is this one pyridine and the nitrogen here is not fused to the ring so you start from here 1 2 3 4 you skip the uh, fused bond 5 6 7 7 8 9 and 10 so okay the, for the numbering system you have to uh, draw the coordinate axes then uh, put as many atoms uh, maximum number of atoms possible i mean the right top corner of the right uh, right right top corner quadrant okay then start numbering from the atom immediately after the point of fusion so in this in this case so uh, we are not we are ignoring the left quadrant we have ignoring this the left bottom quadrant uh, right bottom quadrant so we are concentrating on this one and the fusion point is only this this one this one so next atom should be the given the first number one so then go on clockwise so uh, then clockwise one two three four etc okay you skip the physically the uh, the uh, bond the bond that is fused so they are skipped and all of you know i think i just uh, to be uh, precise and the, uh, this this bond which uh, this carbon which has been skipped is numbered as 4 a that's all so similarly uh, this bond, this carbon is numbered as 6 a so that means as a whole that means this uh, system of nomenclature of the fused systems uh, give rise to two things the new name or the new numbering new numbering i said again mind it we'll have a more on uh, this new numbering system but uh, so then eventually uh, what should be named as this one should be named as 1 and 7 1 7 7 3 okay and 1 7 7 3 and uh, let us let, let us say um, a few more maybe uh, let us say few more uh, there are uh, things uh, one more let us say uh, fused uh, system here you have thiophene and fused to uh, thiophene fused to okay thiophene fused to uh, furan now what should be the name okay here is a case of now see, f size, see both the rings are of same size right five member but the atoms are different oxygen and sulfur so which one gets the preference <laughs> that's what we thought right okay and uh, so i mean but there is a prescript actually there is priority for, uh, rules in the handbook of uh, heterocyclic chemistry but uh, yes uh, for, uh, now you have been uh, right so so that means have, uh, uh, system get the uh, higher priority than thiophene so then thiophene should be the uh, prefix then so thio uh, so I actually thought not thiophene, you know, it should be thieno, thieno, and then should be bracket. Bracket should indicate the fusion, and then it should be uh, named as furan. Fine. And <coughs> then uh, what should be uh, this uh, bonds here? The within the bracket, it should be uh, a, then b. So that means the uh, furan should uh, carry uh, the alphabet b then uh, before that you have a comma and uh, sorry, 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 sorry you have a hyphen actually hyphen and then you have to specify this bond here so again uh, you start from sulfur here individually so uh, 1 and 2 and 3 so it should be 2 uh, 2 comma 3 hyphen and b so this is the name let us uh, look at one more example uh, a very similar example just now you see there is a little bit of confusion here now, <coughs> now if pyrrole ring is fused to a furan ring, pyrrole ring is fused to a furan ring. So what should be the name then? So it should be named as furan or pyrrole. If you, if you, uh, that's that's what we thought. But again, uh, you have to go to the book and see what is the priority. In this particular case, nitrogen actually gets the pri higher priority. Nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. If you don't remember, you don't have to. You, you don't have to remember. But this is uh, it's important because it is given the, the priority is already been cited in the textbook. Okay, 
So, it is actually uh, it is a pi roll and in this case there is no problem that is and this is then prefix should be Furano. So, prefix should be Furano and uh, as usual. So, the alphabet should comes from the pi roll ring A and B. So, this is A B the uh, sorry hyphen hyphen and for the furan uh, this, uh, this is the arrow and then the furan it should be 1 2 3. So, it should be 2 and uh, comma 2 comma 3 and this. Okay. Uh, let us uh, let us take another example another example this one little tricky though uh, what you have to re uh, remember that the when you are finding out the alphabet for the ring fusion or the numbers both the arrows should converge means if the arrow one arrow is anti clockwise other arrow should be clockwise not both this arrow should be clockwise or both this arrow should be anti clockwise. Uh, then example uh, let us uh, look at this example here uh, here you have a six member ring and then you have five member ring and the bonds are of course like as usual and this. So what is the new what is the name of this nucleus? There are C here. So, in the first case, what I said, if you have two three different bonds, first gets the priority, the uh, pyrrol gets the priority, then the furan, then the thiophane, and just the reverse of the what we have the numbering oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen. Okay. Uh, but in this case, it is very easy to distinguish which one uh, becomes the parent ring system, which one becomes the parent ring system? Six member, the one the larger six. Member. So, that means it should be named as pyran it should be named as pyran and then there should be with bracket again and then it should uh, the other one should be furo. Now, you have to uh, specify the ring juncture. So, uh, specify the ring juncture means you have the principal ring is pyran right? then alphabet should come from the pyran. So, uh, okay, all of us know that the first bond should be named as A and this is B and this is C. So, that means uh, it is basically B. So, B pi run, B pi run, then hyphen and the numbering. Numbering in case of few run, all of us know 1, this is 2, and this is 3. So, it is not that means uh, when you are putting the alphabets, uh, we, the arrow was like this, and when the numbering actually comes this way. But then that means when you record the numbering, you have to have a, uh, an arrow of this kind. That means you have to write here 3 and 2, 3 and 2. So, 3 and 2. Okay. Understand? Uh, there is nothing uh, to be <laughs> noted. Okay. Uh, let, let us, let us I, I think I break this into uh, two things. Either. How is that? Let us say this is a, this is a pyran ring system and this is a furan ring system. This is the principal group. So, principal group should carry the alphabets. So, this is A and B, right. So, that means the B has been denoted for this furan a number should be uh, indicated and in this case uh, if you individually number this uh, furan ring 1, 2, 3, right. So, that means when you go from 1 to 3 the arrow goes like this and here when you go to A from A to B and to C the arrow goes like this. So, anti clockwise and this was uh, anti clockwise this, anti -clockwise, this is also anti clockwise. So, but, but both the uh, arrows should be clockwise or anti clockwise. Okay. That means, once you fix the B here, then to make this arrow uh, clockwise, uh, sorry, anti clockwise, sorry, clockwise. So, you have to read 3 and 2. So, this that is how you have to read 3 and 2. Okay. Fine. Let, let us see one more. Uh, uh, here you have a again a system, right. 5 member, 6 member, right? 2 different atoms. So, which one gets the higher priority? That means, the priority can be decided by the base number of the atoms, nature of the atoms or nature of the size of the ring. So, obviously, the first thing that should come to your mind is the size first. So, okay, no matter what is the ring. So, that means, right? that is what that is what you say, but there is a prescribed priority prescribed priority in books. So, you have to uh, if you uh, do not remember you just go to the book and see in certain cases the uh, things are not uh, as you expected like uh, I would uh, have expected a uh, six member uh, getting the higher priority than the five member, but 
in this case heteroatom is that is deciding. Okay. So, there is a list actually, there is a list like you know there is surnames and nicknames and the suffix and prefixes. Uh, so, there is a list of the priority of the uh, uh, nuclei, okay. like in uh, no, normal nomenclature priority of the functional groups like carboxylic acids, aldehydes, ketones, alcohol, amines, etcetera, etcetera. Okay. So, in this case this is also uh, named as furan, furan and then and so uh, within bracket then what is, or, what is the other one? It should be thio thiopyran. Six member uh, six member with sulfur is known as thiopyran. So thiopyrano. Thio, thio, so it should be named as thiopyrano. Okay. Thiopyrano. Now you have to uh, specify the ring juncture. So, ring juncture should what is the alphabet? B. B, very good. B hyphen and the number that means A and B and C. So, the, now you see uh, 1, 2, 3, right. So, if this comes this way, the arrow this also the, uh, must converge. So, it should be then 3 and 2, 3 and 2, fine. So, that okay. Now, that means uh, to clearly. So, if you uh, rewrite it would look like this, uh, this. Now, mind it there is an extra hydrogen up here on the top extra hydrogen. So, that that is uh, termed as indicated hydrogen. So, what is the number of the indicated hydrogen? Okay. That is what when I also did that when um, I did the same mistake when I was a student, but you have to remember one thing this is a very important thing in heterocyclic chemistry most people do not know because somewhere at some point it is this it is uh, you know in just very uh, uh, negligibly written somewhere okay what i have to do after this, so far what did i do we we identified the nuclei we identified the fusion but we but also we have said the number is start from right top corner right top corner right that's what we did but when i say so actually uh, you have to do that after after having the parent nucleus name fusion and then you have to do a renumbering. Did you get my point? That means, after everything is done the numbering has to be done afresh Me means that means whole system should be numbered whole system should be numbered. Okay. In this case uh, again numbering uh, if you remember for the numbering systems you have to go start from oxygen, oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen oxygen sulfur nitrogen like anti tick. Okay. So, this should be then 1 that means, we are now having a real fresh numbering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, that means, this should be named as 7 it is thiopyrano 3 2 b furan. Okay, I will give you one more I will give you one more example I will give you one more example. I think uh, I think uh, again this is taken from uh, okay okay let us say uh, I think by now all of us know this is nitrogen and this is nitrogen this is this is what is it carbazol carbazol okay so what should be the numbering where the numbering uh, should uh, number the carbon is to start okay one two. 3, 4. Okay. Um, when this numbering was suggested actually what they did they inverted this molecule as if nitrogen on the top, nitrogen on the top. Okay. This is actually the way uh, uh, people used to write, but we do not follow, but we are used to this. So, you have to keep this heteroatom up. Now, right top corner, what is the right top corner? 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So, the parent carbazole is basically 9 H carbazole. Now, let us take a molecule let take uh, uh, this kind. Now, again so, now how do we uh, name them? Okay. 
that means, first of all we have identified as a fuse system. When you have fuse systems, you write a coordinate. You write a coordinate okay, plus maximum number of these uh, maximum number of the uh, uh, ring along the x axis, then maximum number of atoms in the right top quadrant and then what? Then you have to identify the principal nucleus. What is the principal nucleus in this case? Carbazole, because it is lying along the uh, line. So, it is a carbazole, fine. Carbazole. And then uh, bracket, I think we will write later. What is the prefix? What is the prefix? Okay, 6 member ring with 2 nitrogen, 1 4 nitrogen. Pyridazine, pyridazine, 1 2 nitrogen pyrazine, 1 3 nitrogen pyrimidine, 1 pyridazine. So, pyridazine that means pyridazine O, pyrida, pyridazine O, fine, pyridazine O carbazole, and then numbering. Uh, the, what, what is the numbering system? What should be the bond? What should be the bond? The, the alphabet comes from uh, uh, carbazole. No, one car C, C uh, A, B and C. Which one? C. If you look at individually, carbazole separately, C. then it is basically the C. So, that means, so now we are talking about these nucleus etcetera individually. So, C then hyphen and the number. What is the number? Number of number of what? The number should come from the prefix, prefix nucleus, prefix nucleus that means, so that means now this number should this is the number should come from prefix nucleus right. So, that means A, B, C this one and this uh, the, the, uh, this arrow should also be this one that means, uh, uh, 1, 2, 3 that means 2, 3. So, 2, 3, 2, 3 C carbazole right, 2, 3 C carbazole fine. What else to be ok? So, that means pyridazino 2, 3 uh, C carbazole, but something else is missing now. You have to identify, you have to level the hydrogen, this hydrogen of here, what is the number of hydrogen? As I said, what you have to do now, you have to write, you have to, uh, you have to start a fresh numbering, fresh numbering now. That is the important thing. After fusion everything done, so you have to do the fresh numbering. Uh, right top corner, uh, after the fusion point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, it is actually 7 H, 7 H, uh, Piridazino 2, 3, sorry, 2, th uh, 2 3 C Carbazole. Understood? Okay. Let us uh, let us take a uh, uh, let us take a molecule which is very famous molecule, very famous molecule. I think uh, let us see. Those who are studying heterocyclic uh, sorry uh, asymmetric synthesis, they would know a term called pi box. What is that pi box? This octagonal union. Close, uh, not exactly though. Uh, P Y st actually stands for pyridine. PY stands for pyridine. So, you have a pyridine up here okay, and then oxazoline ring system, oxazoline ring systems. So, oxazoline means no, oxazoline means oxygen and nitrogen in 1 and 3 positions and joule means 5, 5, five member ring. So, you can uh, very clearly write uh, 5 member ring, okay, 5 member ring and similarly uh, on this side also there is one, there is one here then 5 member ring fine and both the cases, both the cases there are actually two methyl groups here, methyl groups here. Okay. So, this is a very important actually catalyst, most of the cop, all of us know um, nitrogen has a special affinity towards a particular metal copper, eh? copper, this is a special affinity. Whenever you are coming across any copper catalytic reactions, you will see one of the ligands is a nitrogen. Okay. 
uh, like uh, any other transition metal for palladium oxide you all know the uh, phosphorus. Okay. So, likewise uh, oxygen if you have uh, alkali metals also are very useful etcetera. So, uh, this is a very good catalyst for all kinds of uh, reactions with copper catalyzed reactions. Okay. Uh, it also it can decompose the diazo compound, it can produce carbene etcetera, it can also induce uh, asymmetric um, inductions in asymmetric synthesis, uh, it can uh, do ag agitation all kinds of things. But um, I mean it is uh, abbrevi abbreviated as pi box, but you can understand what is the name, what should be the name. Or the name should be okay. I think we will come back to that little later maybe and then we will let us let us see we will first do a little bit of um, um, little bit of uh, small thing like like so let us say uh, if you let us say if you have a carboxylic acid right and from there you want to uh, make an oxazoline. This is a little bit of this uh, synthetic chemistry. So, so long we have been talking about the heterocyclic chemistry etcetera etcetera nomenclature. Now, how do we make it? This is an oxygen derivative, this is a useful derivative many of you know and useful derivative who, is, who was the pioneer? Myers, people say Myers oxazolidine ring system, it is a very useful ring system and how do you make it? Very good and what else? That means, uh, 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 that means you will have to have an amino group here, the, the dimethyl and OH group. And what is the other, other substrate? Other substrate should be acid chloride. Just you mix them, very nice reaction though. Very nice reactions, you straight away you get uh, this compound. What is the advantage? Uh, this is an activating group. Activating group means uh, if you have uh, if you have a base, if you have a base, it can generate a carbon ion at the alpha position. So, if you have uh, let us say that means you have a carbon ion at the alpha positions, then you can do all kinds of reactions, all kinds of reactions. So, you say, but so how do you name this? This oxazoline, for example. How do you how do you uh, name this oxazoline? Okay, maybe uh, 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 Oxazoline means yeah, uh, you can quickly write R C double bonds is just like a shift base kind of thing and the, and the, and it is easy to remember that this gem dimethyl group should be uh, next to nitrogen. Reason being if you have gem dimethyl group next to oxygen they have a tendency to undergo dehydration. So, the, this amino alcohol is a pretty stable alcohol. Now, what should be the name? How do you name it? Okay. So, uh, let us say we know now oxazoline fine that, that is uh, understood oxazoline uh, oxazoline fine. What else we have to then you now you have to do the numbering. So, numbering go, starts from oxygen. So, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, that means uh, 4, 4 dimethyl dimethyl and then uh, 1, 2, 3, then this one, this is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 3 alkyl, 3 alkyl for 4, 4 dimethyl, uh, 2 sorry 2, so 2, 2 alkyl, 2, two alkyl 4, 4 dimethyl, no. Right. Actually, you have to say uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, uh, here you have to write 4, 5 dihydro. That means, original oxazoline is 4, hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay. So, that means, original molecule is like this. Original molecule is like this, right. So, 4, 5 dihydro means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means, 4, 5 dihydro means first as if first you have hydrogenated 2 uh, this 4, 5 
dihydro. Then you have substituted these two hydrogens by dimethyl group, dimethyl group. Okay, and so that means this name. Now come uh, come to this. Uh, let us say uh, pi, uh, okay, um, pi box. Pi box. Then uh, what should, uh, should be? Uh, you have pyridine again. Uh, uh, pretty easy to uh, write, right? And so you have nitrogen, double bond nitrogen, uh, oxygen here, five member. Uh, I just if you recall that oxazoline derivative. So on the pyridine side, you have a just five member ring, oxazoline. Oxazoline. Okay. Uh, then what? And as I have said before, uh, in this case, uh, in this case, the uh, real pi box actually will have uh, actually will have a phenyl group here, and and the phenyl group on the other side. Phenyl group on the other side. Okay. So what next? How to name it? Again, five member and six member. In both the cases, you have nitrogen and oxygen. So, size gets the preference, size gets the preference most often unless it is prescribed. Okay. So, that means uh, it should be named as pyridine, fine. The substituent now, what, oh, now you have within bracket the substituent, what is the number of the substituent? Uh, 2, 2, 6, right? 2, 6. So, that means it is a 2, 6, 2, 6, 2, 6, and then this is there are two different substituent. So, you write bis this fine that means there are two substituents then what do you write then uh, just only one uh, when you say this that means it has taken care of both of them then you write uh, only one of them so so it should be number uh, first number uh, 1 2 3 4 so 4 phenyl no but at the moment you have to write also 4 r or s or something like that so, this is uh, what? Uh, let us say uh, A, B, uh, C, R. So, that means this is that means 4 R within bracket, then 4 phenyl, 4 phenyl, 4, four phenyl, then 4 phenyl, 4 5 dihydro. 4, 5 dihydro, dihydro, oxazole, there is one more. No, oxazole ring is connected at the 2 position. So, 2, oxazole 2, aisle, oxazole 2, aisle. Okay, so, then everything is complete. Ah, yes. Okay. Both are because they are mirror image. So if you just uh, just uh, you have a C two axis. So if you rotate that, that's basically the mirror image. Sir, so there will be no E for oxazole in I. Uh, in between there will be no E. No, no. When you say I, that means that is that vanishes. Let us let us let us uh, take a um, uh, uh, molecule which is quite familiar to all of you. I think by now you should be able to. Uh, I okay, will wait for the answer from you. Write down. Again, a pyridine nucleus, right? And here you have uh, here you have what is that nucleus? Name of the nucleus? No, no, this this nucleus, five member ring. Uh, it is not a pyrrole. It is known as pyrrolidine. Pyrrolidine, pyrrolidine. Okay. And now all of us know this. Uh, what is the name of this molecule? Right. In brief, it is nicotine. Nicotine is good or bad? I do not know. No, 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 because, because eh? both. Ah, right, very good. Santanu is no joy. Why? Why good? Because sometimes uh, uh, it is given to the patient also. Uh, uh, sometimes it is given to the patient also. No, no. Nicotine, what is the actually the primitive use of nicotine? Anybody knows? Because nicotine used to be used as herbicides, herbicides, insecticides. Uh, I do not know whether it is uh, used or not now, but uh, previously it is used to be used. Okay. So, uh, how do you name this? I think uh, should I uh, try or you, at, uh, you try at home? Okay. Uh, okay. You try at home maybe, I will give you. Uh, okay. So, we, uh, we have uh, a few more examples. 
may be uh, will give you some other examples okay you try at home okay uh, let us say um, one more very popular molecule actually this is these are all very popular molecule i think some of you know and uh, uh, last week there was a seminar speaker who talked about this uh, this molecule is simple molecule eh? tempo tempo is not good enough but you have to name know the full name oh, tetramethyl tetramethyl Pyridine? No, pyridine, py, py, pyridine uh, n oxide means it is a plus and minus. Okay, tetramethyl pyridine one oxyl, oxyl one oxyl. This is a tempo. Okay, and uh, let us say, and uh, uh, very recently, I think this is also uh, in some, many of you have come across uh, such a molecule. Uh, let us say this one. Um, a molecule of this kind, uh, it has also a nickname and recently is one of our research scholars also gave a seminar from Soman's lab. Uh, what was the molecule? No, no, again it, it has a ah, right, very good, P, P perenol or we shall pi perenol we call, pi perenol, but what, what should be its official name, official name. Right, right, but but that is not the official name. When you write the paper, you have to go back unless and until you know the exact name. You have to go back to cipher and dig out the name. That that takes a lot of your time. But if you are little confident, you can this. And let us say, uh, like it's a furan, for, for example, furan molecule, furan three carboxylic acid. You first identify the nucleus. So in this case, it's a nucleus. What is the nucleus in this? No, you have a five member ring with oxygen. Like yesterday, I said uh, THF is known as THF is, uh, THF it is a nickname, oxolane, right. So, TH, so similarly, uh, this is dioxolane, dioxolane, 1 3 dioxolane, and but you have a benzene ring here. So, benzo dioxolane. So, that means benzo dioxolane, right. And uh, so then you have to talk about the fusion also. You have to talk about the fusion, right? So uh, what is the fusion? That means one you can write benzo, benzo, and some uh, this this fusion, and then uh, one three, one three di oxolane, dioxolane, one three dioxolane or one three dioxol in this case it is right. Uh, the okay, dioxol reason being the, because you have to put the ester uh, formyl group. So, uh, the formyl group should be no, known should be named as carboxyl carboxaldehyde carboxaldehyde. So, you have benzo okay. now you have to specify this numbering here what is the numbering the fusion that means the fusion is the, this bond is fused. So, that means the, the, the fusion comes, uh, fusion should be designated as an alphabet, right, of the parent system. Parent system is oxazole. So, that means, uh, uh, so, but the numbering should go through A, uh, it, it, uh, individually you have to number first A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right. So, that means uh, A, B, C, D. C okay. Well, uh, my notes doesn't say anything though, but uh, you have to say A, B, or A, B, C, D. So benzo probably D it should be the benzo D one three dioxalane. Benzo or uh, benzo D one three dioxalane. Okay. So, it, you have to individually number this. You have to, when you say like carbazol, benzo carbazol, first individually number them, then one two bond should be A, B, uh, two to three bond should be B and so go on. Then eventually you have to give this whatever the bond is fused that should be designated as an alphabet. So, A, B, C that is perfectly D. Okay, we will uh, we'll check maybe I think I um, will uh, check, but then 
what you have to do? That you have to. Huh? That That's what you have to do it now. So what what is then numbering? That's what I am trying to come to. For final numbering, you have to after the fusion everything is over, then you have to do a fresh numbering, new numbering system. That means whole molecule should be taken together. So now how do you number them? Again, so one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? No. Then you have to give the lowest number. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. So it should be actually five carboxylic acids. Okay, I think we have enough of numbering, right? Uh, so. That should be no. Oh no no, that should not be done here because in case of benzene, all the carbon carbon bonds are equivalent. Had it been heteroatom substitute, for example, if you had a nitrogen up here, then you have to specify the number, number of the bond which has been fused to the oxalate bond, oxalate uh, nucleus. Okay, let me uh, take another example. Uh, we have recently synthesized this molecule. We have recently synthesized this molecule. Let us see uh, what should be the uh, name of this molecule. So, it is a <coughs> carbazole moiety and this thing, that thing. Okay. So, what is the name? Visually, you can see that it is a carbazole moiety. So, the parent nucleus could should be known named as carbazole, carbazole, right? And what else? And a cycloheptane system has been fused to the carbazole. So that means you have to indicate the uh, the fused bonds, fused bonds. So, how do you do? Individually number the carbo carbazole by A, B, C, D, etcetera. So, that means uh, this is A, this is B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So, we have now individually numbered the carbazole nucleus with A, B, C, D bonds. Okay. Now, now very quite, quite easily you can see that which are the bonds that has been fused with cycloheptane D, E and F that is it fine and what else and which ring has been fused prefix the prefix is the prefix now cyclohepta cyclohepta. So, cyclohepta, but then there are so many hydrogens there, right. So, hydrogens, so hydrogen means extra hydrogen, how many extra hydrogens are there? 4, you have a NH hydrogen, so that means these are the extra hydrogen over the sp2 carbon atoms. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, that means tetrahydro tetrahydrocyclohepta D E F carbazole. That is not enough. You have to specify the number of the hydrogen. So, how do you number the hydrogen? Again, you have to do a new numbering taking the molecule as a whole as one, one molecule. So, you start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So, that means you have 4, 5, 6 and 10 that means 4, 5, 6, 10 tetrahydrogen. Okay. So, likewise there are actually there are so many things I think we will summarize uh, I mean there are other things also there are quite a few interesting uh, features I can tell you. Uh, let me uh, for example, uh, one I think I should uh, talk about this one because a lot of people in our uh, department works on uh, this sort of molecule. Um, so, uh, what should be the name of this molecule for example? What should be the name? It is a very simple one, but what should be the name of this molecule? 
No, no, you have to give a complete name. Uh, I do not, uh, yes, there are cases. Sometimes you have to identify the nucleus, sometimes you have to give the full name. Uh, if you say uh, it should be tetra, tetrajole, fine, perfectly all right, tetrajole, and then uh, phenyl, phenyl should be 2 phenyl, 2 phenyl, right, 2 phenyl tetrajole, 2 phenyl tetrajole, and what else? You have to write 1 H hydrogen. So, 1 H uh, 2 phenyl tetrajole perfect all right. Okay. But, now there is a case a very similar thing, very similar thing what you see I mean these are the things I mean uh, you have to just little bit uh, cautious about that is all. You, you may not have to remember everything, but at, at least you should know that uh, the situation would differ if you put again nitrogen, nitrogen I will write the same molecule uh, nitrogen here uh, sorry uh, this is carbon and this is a nitrogen up here uh, same thing this hydrogen here you have a benzene ring and then what you will find you will find this is a carboxylic acid and a carboxylic acid here. Okay. So, what should be the name? Like say you one would say that in the previous example if you recall that was known as 1H2 phenyl tetrazole, but in this case uh, in this case the parent system is different parent system is different the parent system is what is the parent system? All of us know isothalic acid, isothalic acid. So, so that means uh, it should be named as tetrajolyl, tetrajolyl isothalic acid. So, tetrajolyl though when you say so, then you of course other things you have to do that you have to uh, okay, I think I will rewrite uh, actually it name is 5 uh, 1 H tetra tetrajolyl tetrajolyl and then you have to specify the uh, point of attachment that is 5 aisle then iso ph th thalic and then acid like uh, many of you know i think uh, in high school you have read right and so what is the name of this acid for example uh, or what is the ipac name of uh, uh, supritivol let us uh, see lesson from Supriti. Just hold on. Uh, what is the name of this uh, IPEC name of this acid? Um, okay. Uh, 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 right. So that means now it is basically uh, named as a plus acid aliphatic compound because the carboxylic acid lies there. That means the group gets the priority. So it is a phenyl gets the substituent. So similarly, exactly here. The carboxylic acid gets the priority, and the, identity, the parent system has been identified by the presence of the carboxylic acid. Ah, yes, yes, sir. What is your question? In this case, it is 2 aisle or 5 This one is actually, uh, I have taken from printed one. Uh, it should be, yes, 5 aisle because it goes by the nitrogen, number of nitrogen. Uh, pre previous cases means which, which case? The previous example. That is also 5. That is also 5. That is also 5. Okay. And uh, okay. I think we are running out of time. Maybe I uh, will give you one more important name. Important name. Okay. Important name and reaction. Uh, this is sometimes I think I, I think we will have we will not have enough time. The next time probably we will talk about that. There is a name called a class of compound known as uh, seed, uh, uh, seed nones. I do not know whether you have heard of it. Uh, the name originated from a very simple reaction N phenyl, N phenyl glycine. If you take N phenyl glycine and then uh, treat this with sodium uh, nitrite uh, in presence of concentrated HCl, you can guess what is the expected product. What is the expected product? pH N glycine remains as it is. What, what is the expected product? NO, right? NO. But if you uh, then, if you just uh, acidify, uh, sorry, then you treat with acidic anhydride, you get a cyclic compound. You get a cyclic compound. Uh, huh? Not really. That is called actually the seed known. Uh, the name of this, okay, the compound that is obtained 
uh, will have a structure like this. It is not a uh, truly looking like an uh, organic structure or aromatic structure, but uh, it, it would looking it would look like this. It look like this. That means you uh, seed nodes. This is basically the five member rings. All the seed nodes are these five member compounds for which there is no definite regenerative structures. Normally, the two structures are possible. As, as you can see from here, the charge are delocalized, and one of the other structures could be uh, where the charges are delocalized uh, outside the outside the ring system, outside the ring systems. So this was uh, the, this was actually this is the basically this is called seed nodes. Okay, this why seed nodes and these compounds were discovered in Sydney in 1935, uh, Australia. Australia by a scientist, but the, the, but this was not named after the scientist. It was named after the place, and then. Yes, uh, he, has, he has sacrificed his name probably. His name. Okay, even for the country or the place he loves. Okay, then uh, people did not like it because there are uh, obviously there are you know competitions here and there. And so the, uh, the, this sort of compounds have been renamed. These compounds are also known as mesoionic compounds. Mesoionic compounds. Uh, special class of deuterionic compounds, but so this is a cyclic compound. It's in heterocyclic, so that's why they are they have named as seed nodes. People do not often use uh, only, in, but in 2010 there was a uh, review article in a tetrahedral letter, sorry tetrahedron. So you can go through it, but uh, it's not very popular, but very special cases. And uh, very recently, one of the compounds, the, like say, uh, if you begin with uh, a, an amino acid, all of you know what is the amino acid. Uh, everybody knows this one, proline. Obviously, the end product. If you follow the series of the reactions that uh, I described before, so what you'll find, you'll find again a five-membered ring, and with oxygen up here, then uh, plus charge and minus, and this. What you, what you see here, charge are delocalized, but one of the charge is outside the ring systems. In such a uh, situation, they are known as these sidnons or mesoionic compounds. But what is the advantage? Or, or why suddenly they have been identified as a class of compound. This is a pretty stable compound though. You, you can store it for um, days and days. You can pre prepare it in, in grams and multigrams. So, you know the means it is an well identified, well characterizable products. Uh, then why we should talk about in the heterocyclic chemistry course? Because it is in heterocycle number one. Number two, it uh, actually is an aromatic and a, a, a seed known is an aromatic compound. There are many reactions which have been characteristic of the aromaticity of the nucleus. So, that is the reason why they have been given special attention. Okay. And so, I think there are what is that? Acetone is what? Act as a diene. There is a reaction, yes. Yes, yes, there is a dill solder kind of reaction, yes. Dill solder substitution, all kinds of reactions actually. Yes, just like a sort of a furan type kind of molecule. Okay, and uh, since uh, we have one or two more uh, minutes, maybe maybe we can uh, talk about one more important. I, we actually, I had one more lecture notes. Uh, I thought I will talk about different medicines you often take. More the most important medicines where the heterocyclic nucleus figure. Anybody has taken recently any medicine anywhere? Uh, no. So you are all healthy persons. Fine. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, for healthy person, hyperactive persons, you know, often we, uh, often we uh, give medicine, right? Uh, often we give medicines. There is a medicine called, um, I think, whether you know or not, uh, Valium. Do you, anybody knows what Valium is? No. Now you have to say something else. Basic nucleus, you have to say. Okay, I'll give you the basic nucleus. You write down the structure. It's a benzo. 1 4 benzo diazopinone. Let us say 1 4 benzo diazopinone. So, you have to write down the structure, and if you do not know, uh, next time you come up with this structure because this is a very important class of molecule, many of you know. If you have, let us say, mental disorder, mental problem, often when you are in, especially in, in research, you know, you will have, you will come across such uh, time when. Uh, you are depressed, the things are not going all right with the lab, with the, uh, with the professor, you know all kinds of things. So, 
So, one, once upon a time you have to take uh, benzo 14 diazepinone or alprazolam. What is alprazolam? On my nose, uh, it looks like on my nose. What is it? It's a, it's, a, it's a kind of drug, the sedatives, sedatives, and but it is good. You can, as I said before, I think I'll, I, I mean, so then there is, there is a huge number of, I don't know whether I should talk about it or not, because actually we have to talk a little bit of the chemistry, okay. So, probably in next class, uh, we will talk about uh, something like, let us say, um, what? A structure determination. How to uh, determine the structures of heterocyclic compounds? What is the speciality? Why is the structure determination special in heterocyclic chemistry class? Any idea? Those, uh, okay, I can expect a uh, uh, good answer from the research scholars or those who are involved in research. See, if you go to the NMR room, come out with a spectrum and the spectrum is good, you start smiling, but you do not know, you know how to explain. Okay. In most cases, we, leave, we, we go for proton NMR, right? but in most heterocyclic compounds, we will not have proton enough or number of protons diagnostic protons. So, it is very difficult to be, I mean I mean very difficult to de determine the structure with uh, confidence. Okay. So, you have to do and so we will uh, talk about it and uh, then what are the things then there are some certain guidelines. Okay, you follow this follow that for example, you have produced let us say 2, 3 dimethyl pyrazole pyrazole do you remember what it is now can you make out what it is 1, 2 nitrogen 5 membering 2, 5 dihydro, dimethyl. So, acetyl acetone hydrogen mixed together you get a nice white solid no problem, but how do I know um, whether we have got the molecule in our time we used to check the melting point. Now, what do you do I mean without thinking people go to the NMR room whether it serves your purpose or not and so what do you expect out there what do you expect in NMR room a singlet only because it is a, a symmetric molecule you get a methyl group and methyl in the 2 point something means it could be acetone, it could be acetic acid all kinds of things. So, it is very difficult you have to ascertain whether you have a nitrogen, NH nitrogen or not. If you remember often I ask, ask questions those who are making alcohol for example, how do you know you have made an alcohol it could be ether 2 if, if you have a let us say cyclic diol or IR if okay, since you have not started research yet you do not know what IR is, but all the organic sample will give you OSP. The way we run the IR here in this, I think last year I do not know, I used to take this spectroscopy class, I used to take them to the NMR room, they will see, I mean if you take any, any organic compound, they will show you the OSP, simply because the room should be free from moisture, the machine should be free from moisture, it should be covered with silica gel, anhydrous silica gel etcetera all these things. Yes, with um, precaution you can find out from IR, but uh, without precaution you cannot. 